Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is Wild Wednesday. First and foremost, before I roll on to anything, I do want to wish each and every one of you a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk, whenever it is you're watching this. I hope you're having a great time with your family, friends, loved ones, doing whatever it is that makes you happy in life, because life really is too short as is. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. I love seeing each and every one of you every Monday through Friday, permitting my schedule and, of course, major holidays. And then also, one last thing, check out the information in the description box. I give you a little bit bigger of a taste of the daily movie, so hopefully it'll help you decide if you want to uh, track down a copy and check it out or not, whether you stream it, uh, purchase a copy, or however it is that you... Um, uh, see your films, you know, it, it just, uh, uh, I guess it's one or the other, but either way, um, it hopefully it'll help you check out the, the movie. And I, what I give you in there is your, your brief synopsis. I give you a starring cast, your director, runtime of the cut I am watching, along with an MPAA rating, if there is one that exists. And today there definitely is one, and it's a fun one. It's crazy to believe that it is a uh, NC-17. I haven't, I don't get too many Ed NC-17s rolling my way. They're usually unrated, you know. That's that's usually how I roll, though, because you can get some of the better stuff that way, and it's chances are it's probably going to be unedited, which that's... But let's face it, folks, that we want to watch the most uncut copy that we can find. Unfortunately, sometimes we run into restrictions uh, due to uh, region codes or... or um, just flat out bad distribution because there are there are labels out there that do cut their films and it's a horrible horrible tragedy because censorship is a beast you know and we need to not uh, allow it. Either way, uh, let's get on. Now that I got all that out of the way, let's roll on to the movie of the day. And today's came out 49 years ago. Holy crap, that makes me feel really old. I am not 49 years old. I am 40 years old, by the way. Um, but I do... It, it, I I was born close enough to this that it makes me feel old. <laughs> but it is none other than the amazing John Waters film. Pink Flamingo, starring the late, great, divine, a.k.a. Glenn Milstead. Um, what a uh, uh, fun, fun, weird, uh, messed up, disturbing, gross movie this is. Uh, if you make it through this and you don't find something in here uh, a little repulsive or, or disgusting... Um, you might want to check yourself because there is definitely things in here that are really, really gross. I'm not going to get onto it just yet, but I'm going to uh, give you a little bit more information on this release that I have here. Now, this one is, I forget who released one. Well, this is a New Line Cinema release, so um, they are the ones that cut together that crappy trailer that I gave you a link for um, because I couldn't find a scene that was worthwhile of... of uh, um, giving you a link for, or I flat out it was uh, inappropriate, <laughs> and I don't want to get get anybody in trouble. <laughs> but anyways, this this release here is it's a it's an okay release. It, it's a uh, it's in one of those like um, recyclable cases, so it's very very flimsy and um, seems like it's going to break rather easy. Uh, there is zero reversible artwork, which I could have told you right away that there wasn't any. Um, as far as special features go, you do get some deleted scenes. Um, that's why um, the runtime on this one runs at an hour and 48 minutes-ish. Um, because they add on those deleted scenes directly after... Directly on... Um, uh, after the cr the post credits of the film, which the post credits are very short, so it, it jumps right into that very very quickly, and the and it's uh, um, uh, introduced by each scene is introduced by John Waters himself, and he talks about the trailer himself as he introduces it. Um, it's a very very interesting uh, 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 special features in here. This is one of those I'd like to see a better release on. Because I know that they they aren't doing this film enough justice. This is one that um, should stay uh, in the in the light of being being a uh, disgusting movie. I think this is sh should be in everybody's uh, top 
30 disgusting list, you know, I mean, there's, there's some, some messed up films out there, I, maybe top 50, I'll say that, top 50, uh, yeah, anyways, but as far as any other special features, there's no special features other than that, it's pretty basic, pretty bare bones, so, uh, keep that in mind, um, as far as what exactly is this movie about, um, it's about this family that are, um, they're basically the trashiest, most filthiest, filthiest people that exist on on uh, planet Earth. Um, they are extremely disturbing people. Like there is there is a mother who is played by Edith, Edith Massey, who has a a really weird obsession with eggs and the the man the egg man that brings them around daily. Um, instead of a milkman or a newspaper guy, you got a egg man, which is is kind of funny to to think about something like that. Um, Edith Massey is a very good, interesting character in here. Um, she plays the mom to the the mom to Divine, um, and uh, uh, and then also, like I said, Divine's in here. And then we also got uh, uh, watch. What's his name? We got Danny Mills, and he plays um, Crackers, who is uh, um, Divine's son. And then we also got uh, I can't Mary Mar Mary Vin Vivian Pierce plays um, Cotton, who is an interesting character. She is kind of a a sub character that that uh, doesn't get quite enough uh, 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 screen time in this one, but uh, honestly, we tune in on this one for Divine. And then who else do we got in here? We got the late great Lock, Colin Lockery, um, who passed away during uh, filming of this, or I mean, not filming of this. Excuse me. Um, after filming, um, at one point he was uh, very, very high on uh, PCP. As uh, th this is the rumor. I don't know if it's true or not, but he fell through a glass table and bled to death. Um, so you, he is, he was a, uh, a regular when it came to John Waters films. And unfortunately this was, I believe the last film he did for, for John. Um, and then we also got, uh, Meek Stoll in here. She's great in here. She plays, um, Mrs. Marble, who is the, uh, wife to, uh, uh, David Lockery's character. Um, they are, the Marbles are a, uh, a family that is trying to compete with um, Divine and her family to be the most disgusting uh, um, family on earth, the most disgusting people that exist. And both of them really are. They both go through various uh, uh, lengths and bounds and, and just leaps and bounds of, of just depravity to, to make you feel repulsed like um at one point you get to see a man lay on his back completely naked um he is chubbed up a little bit just to let you know so he is rocking a little bit of a of a hard one uh and he lays onto his back and puts his butt up into the air and spreads his cheeks and does a little funny little dance where he uh, he opens and closes his butthole, and you can kind of see somewhat of a little prolapsing, prolapsing going on there. Um, not anything, like, super gross as far as prolapse, but it is a gross thing. Like, you get to see up a good guy's butthole. Um, he does it to the, to the, to the song, The Bird is the Word from the Trash Man, which is absolutely, uh, a perfect, perfect, uh, a placement for music. Which, by the way, the music in this is absolutely great. If you like oldie tunes from like the 60s, 70s, you will enjoy this. It's got some amazing tracks. Uh, and um, if memory serves me correct, when those those were recorded onto the master, I believe John Waters he didn't have the money to um, do it the uh, conventional the uh, the normal way, and so he had to take a less conventional um, uh, approach to it, where he actually um, held the 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 speakers from the from a radio up to the microphone. As the as the scenes were playing to give it that to give it its music and he would record it on hard record it that way, um, and he would edit everything um, uh, in a um, I guess there's usually he doesn't intend for a lot of deleted scenes if if he cuts it it's usually cut for good. 
Ah, yes, yes. Or at least that's the way it was early in his career. I know that when he moved on to stuff like Hairspray, Serial Mom, uh, uh, Crybaby, things of that nature, He when he started upping his game as far as what the studios would let him do, it would... Um, he would become less and less vulgar and more and more uh, commercial to where he would have a lot of deleted scenes and stuff of that nature. And now, um, like I said, the marbles are trying to compete with these guys. Um, they're, they go around and they have Mr. Marble. <laughs> I'm just going to say Mr. Marble, played play by David Lockery. He, uh, basically, he, uh, his, his kick is going around tying a piece of, uh, of butcher meat, meat from, that they got from the butcher and uh, uh, tie it to his wang and go up and flash people doing the old trench coat and flashing people as he's naked under the coat. And he's got this piece of meat tied to his wang. It is just absolutely funny stuff. And I think that um, if you have a little bit of a, uh, a dark sense of humor, you'll find a lot of this absolutely mind-blowing and mind-boggling. But you can't take your eyes off of it. It just grabs a hold of you. And everything, like scene after scene after scene, it just goes into a... A, a different direction it, it, that you never thought a movie could ever go. Um, I'm going to flat out. I'm going to say this is a film because it was recorded on film. If if uh, if uh, memory serves me correct, but uh, either way, um, this I, I think this classifies as a film. But uh, um, the marbles they they have the they also have a uh, a weird little uh, butler type. Uh, chauffeur butler type that he basically uh, do, you know he does everything that that the marbles want him to do they have a weird little racket where they have they go and kidnap women and uh, they impregnate them and they sell their babies to lesbian couples um, and it, there's a scene where a couple is in there trying or a they they do it they do uh, succeed but they buy it they're buying a baby to to raise as their own and it is just wild the uh, butler goes down to the to the basement gives gives the girl some hell um, one of them's dead and there's just a just a baby all all swaddled up just hanging out there um, not really really uh, anything. Uh, uh, suggesting that it belongs there. There's not even a baby bed or anything of that nature. It's kind of funny. Uh, but they uh, they impregnate these women to, to sell off the babies. And the, the person that does the impregnating is the butler. And by the way, the butler's character is very flamboyantly gay. He is a very, he's a gay man. Uh, who obviously doesn't want to have uh, sexual relations with these women, so so he and does the whole turkey baster stuff. It's it's really <laughs> it's messed up. But either way, um, it, he he pays off. He essentially gets these women addicted to to drugs. So he pays them in in drugs. So hopefully they will be a little more compliant. Now, as far as anything else goes in this movie, I don't want to share it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff from, like I said, a man showing his butthole to a man, um, uh, tying meat around his wiener, uh, a man and a woman having sex with a chicken. Yes, I said that correct. A chicken, a live chicken that um, they uh, happen to kill on, on, on uh, camera. Uh, and then later on they cook it for for the crew, so it it wasn't completely a wasted dead animal. It but still, it was a little like whoa! It caught me by surprise the very first time I watched this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, what else do we got? You got a mom giving giving a son a blowjob. You got a a man uh follow a poodle until he. This poodle defecates and pick up this feces and eat it, um, and it really is the it really is feces. There's no um, stage effect or anything like that. 
uh, because you literally see it come out of the dog as the as our character is in in screen in shot in frame as well, and you see go down and just pick it up and scoop a handful right in. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> Divine, you he was a he was a nasty nasty dude, you know. And and I did read a lot of it. Um, Glenn wanted to be. Uh, uh, recognized as a man, as a drag queen, um, he wanted to. All, he was a man. He didn't want to be um, classified as a woman. He never wanted to go through any kind of operation or change, sex change, or anything of that nature. So do keep that in mind when you go into this. Um, that's why he's so over the top and and um, really uh, super super flamboyant. Now, as far as ratings would go, on a technical side, this thing, it works on its own. It, the story is bumpy and shaky as hell. Um, it, it, bumpier than my uh, my reviews, but uh, either way, um, it gets a little um, discombobulated in, in places, disconnected, and it, it becomes a little... Uh, monotonous in in trying to outdo it each scene trying to outdo itself you know that's the one really downfall to it the acting is is obviously not good but that's not why you watch this you do not watch it for the acting ability you just watch it for the shock value and that's where it rolls over to an entertainment side of it because that shock value is extremely entertaining and um, I would probably say this is a uh, um, probably a six out of ten kind of movie. Uh, seven more, it would be a seven if you were watching a with this with a, a group of like-minded individuals. I feel this has the the ability to give you guys a seven on as far as entertainment goes and how the overall screen value as well. So it's this is one that I absolutely love and adore. And if you do not like it, it's probably going to roll down to the to the three and four level for you out of ten. So uh, this one is definitely has a a uh, a certain kind of crowd. So so definitely don't go into the, not everyone should go into this knowing that they can make it through it or at least enjoy it. Um, uh, the first couple times I watched this, I thought it was kind of a rough watch, and I, I really had a hard time making it through parts of it, but the more and more I watch it, the more and more I fall in love with it, and, um, and everything about Divine I just absolutely love. Ah, I love you, Divine. Rest in peace, Glenn. You were, you were awesome. Anyways, I'm gonna get the hell out of here. I got uh, to get, I got some stuff I need to do tomorrow. I got a very weird one coming out for you. It has to do with some witch trials and and uh, um, torturing and things of that nature. So, uh, <laughs> all right, y'all. Love your faces.